on this week's oldest established permanent floating segment, we're going to talk about something uh, for some of you who are not yet into gaming, but have thought about getting into it. Something you're going to know, need to know. Something very, very important. The cost of getting into various different forms of gaming. Uh, we're going to be talking not just card games here, but we're also going to be talking... Uh, tabletop RPGs, uh, war gaming, and to a little bit of an extent video game uh, from uh, some of the results of uh, some research that we actually did here. So, uh, David, if you'll start us off by uh, talking to us a little bit about uh, card games. Uh, yeah, training card games. card games goes. Uh, Magic the Gathering is obviously the biggest game, at least out here in Atlanta, and probably in the United States, the biggest card game bar none is Magic the Gathering. Number two would be Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say, um, or Card Fight Vanguard, at least as of right now. But of course, that number two spot tends to waver every little bit once in a while. Um, to, to get into the game... To get into the game, it costs, uh, you know, well, just getting in, you know, it's very easy. All you got to do is just buy a starter pack, which costs like $20 if you're a complete newbie. But if you want to get really competitive and stuff and you start looking at people's decks, obviously just buying booster boxes are not going to cut it. You'd be spending thousands of dollars into buying basically booster box after booster box after booster box with a bunch of cards that you don't even need that you'll sell back off for on bulk for maybe like maybe tops 100 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, depending depending on the value of the cards, because uh, each card, depending on their rarity, and uh, and uh, what type of card they are, how how coveted they are, how useful they are. If if you're selling your trading cards, they vary very widely in uh, how much they are worth. Uh, I know, speaking personally, um, I was at one of my uh, lowest moments in my life, and I was trying to find some way at a local game shop to sell my Yu-Gi-Oh! trading, trading cards, and, well, I, 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 even at the local gaming stores, I couldn't get anyone to buy them. Uh, but, uh, magic card, magic cards, you can, you can trade them in at local gaming stores, you can sell them to pe people online, and depending on what kind of cards you've got, they, you can get some money back for them. Right. Now, to get into uh, Magic the Gathering and play competitively, you have to first look at particular tournaments, look at the top eight decks and see how they're doing. Um, it's no different for places like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I actually do have a total of, well, basically it's sort of an average of, uh, of the uh, decks of each of the regionals of each particular card game that... I know of at least the five card games that we are familiar with. Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Force of Will, and Cardfight Vanguard. Um, Cardfight Vanguard uh, seems to run about average. Uh, I don't have as much information on this because I didn't put as much you know, input into it because, to be frank, of the five, that's the one I know least about. The cheapest of them was Pokemon. Pokemon running a good ninety to one hundred dollars average per competitive deck. So if you want to get in, you could probably get in for ninety to a hundred bucks. And actually, you could probably get in for a lot less if you can find one of those battle arena decks. I actually bought a uh, versus battle arena deck, Xerneas versus Eveltal, and it comes with two decks with about a value total of about one hundred and twenty dollars worth of cards in there. For only twenty bucks, and really? the other, yeah. and the other thing to note about the uh, Pokemon trading card game as well is that you're basically getting two of the same set when you buy those because there is a code in every single booster pack and every single deck set or or booster box or whatever you get get. There are codes that let you use those cards that you've gotten for free in the Pokemon trading card game online. So you're Correct. basically getting the cards twice over, so you're getting double your value out of that. Yeah, well, not quite double your value, because Magic the Gathering has an online card game as well, and the online cards are nowhere near as valuable as the real cards themselves. 
Speaking of, the most expensive of the games was Magic the Gathering. Shock surprise. Getting in on, getting in on standard. Uh, obviously, it costs, you know, you can get one of those competitive decks for like $30, $40 and just, you know, open it up and start playing against someone. But if you really want to get competitive and create a deck that will actually try to surprise and become an actual threat in regional tournaments and to be able to get a little bit more social with more of the hardcore players, top decking, I would say, around 250 to $300 in about that much in uh, standard play. Now, there are three different main types of play in Magic the Gathering, standard being just basically every two years. Uh, I mean, a block lasts about two years in standard. Um, well, there's also modern, which is everything from seventh edition on. There's something in between them that's extended, but I've rarely seen extended play, and I think that's like the last four to five years of Magic: The Gathering. And as far as I know, modern play runs a good five hundred to seven hundred dollars, depending on the kind of cards that you're looking at. And then there is Legacy slash Vintage. Now, the difference between this is that Legacy and Vintage brings in all of the cards in the game. The only difference between it is le- between Legacy and Vintage, I mean. Between Legacy and Vintage is Legacy is banned certain cards that Vintage allows one of. Kind of very similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, Jeremy. Yeah, kind of, kind of similar to Restricted versus Forbidden. Right. Legacy decks could run, you know, I've been seeing 500 to to $1,000. They're usually all over the map, though, because you can actually build a pretty cheap, and by cheap I mean a couple hundred dollars, burn deck, and basically try to run through all your opponents. Uh, one guy had actually done that several years ago in Legacy, I, well, several, maybe like a decade or so ago. But Vintage... There are nine certain cards in the game that at least with at least five or six of them you cannot go without. You absolutely cannot. So that obviously makes the price of this game kind of higher. How much higher? The weakest deck, well I can say weakest, the cheapest deck I could find ran a good $15,000. Ouch. And if you wanted to get, you know, not unlimited, basically it's called unlimited edition. It's the cheapest of the three uh, first editions of Magic the Gathering. If you wanted alpha and beta sets instead, your decks could go as high as $30,000. Which is basically about a little less than twice what my car costs. Just about, yes. Yeah, I. Uh, but you know, it's the game of choice for most gamers who play card games. So, yeah. and plus, because you, if you get to go pro, there is the opportunity to make some money as a pro. Some yeah. guys have made you know good thirty, thirty five thousand average a year playing Magic the Gathering. Yeah, if you want to get into card gaming for the least amount of money, though. I'll, like David said, you really want to go with Pokemon. And there's also another very good reason, besides what we mentioned earlier, the low cost of entry and basically almost getting double the value out of it between the card game and the online trading card game, is that of the big three card games, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic, and Pokemon, Pokemon is the only one that I know of where you can buy a starter deck that you could possibly use in serious competitive play, like in a tournament or something, and Magic maybe get in a few wins. Kind of has that, but like I said, many people already know how to deal with those decks, and there's just so many different archetypes in that game that you're going to kind of be forced to modify that deck eventually. Yeah, and Yu-Gi-Oh! I know it's absolutely not the case, because very often, if you look at the traditional or advanced ban lists that they come out with, and you compare them to all the various different structure decks that they come out of, if you want to use any kind of those decks in competitive play, you're going to have to do a lot of editing. 
because some of the basic cards that come in those structure decks are ones that have been banned from the metagame for years. Right. Like, some of those structure de- structure decks will come out with cards like Monster Reborn and Pot of Greed, which in the TCG are verboten. Well, I think Monster Reborn was uh, brought back to one for a short time recently. Yeah. I, I, the last I checked, which admittedly was a few months ago, it was, it was at, at least in the uh, trading card game, still forbidden. Now, the Japanese OCG, official card game, is a little bit looser on some of their restrictions. Right. And Monster and Reborn to still give you an idea there. Of, To give you an idea of just how expensive Magic the Gathering, and to a lesser or greater extent, depending on how you play it, Yu-Gi-Oh! is... Because of those staple cards that they have, especially Magic Vintage and Yu-Gi-Oh! Vintage, just playing the standard version of Magic. Let's just take the standard version of Magic and the advanced version of Yu-Gi-Oh! I was able to build a competitive deck with Pokemon and Force of Will that I can use for tournaments and still have money left over at the cost that I would have making a Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! deck. And just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to skew us uh, sidelong right into video gaming just for a sec, because this is going to make for a good point of uh, comparison, even for everything else that we talk about later. Right. Getting into video gaming is, compared to even uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!, much cheap, cheaper if you want to be on a competitive level, because really all you need is a console the game of your choice, and an internet connection. And depending on your living situation, the internet connection, you may not even be paying for. Uh, Base cost for, say, say you want to start getting into playing Splatoon, which is a hit game that came out recently. Uh, If you go to Best Buy, you can actually get the game and a 32-gigabyte Wii U bundle for $299.99 plus whatever tax is in your area. Or you can find it online and have it shipped to you for, you know, 300 bucks plus whatever uh, ship, shipping cost is and whatever tax is applicable. And, you know, as long as you've got internet connection to your house, once you get that hooked up to your TV, you're ready to go. Uh, there are... PS4 bundles that you can get, like 500 gigabyte PS4 in the game for what, like four, like 400 bucks? Yeah. Uh, even the even the Xbox One, you know, if if you get a good bundle for that, depending on whether or not you get the Connect, it can be 400 or 500 buck, bucks, and oftentimes those will come with games that you're wanting. So you really just have to pick what game you want. Right. And then, of course, if you want to get into other games, there's the cost of the games over there. But we're, we're just talking basically getting started here. Uh, moving, uh, if you want to get into portable gaming, of course, it's even less expensive. I don't remember how expensive the Vita is off the top of my hand, but... You know, you can get the new 3DS XL for 200 bucks. Uh, I don't think there are any that come with games, right? any bundles that come with games for that right now. But even so, uh, as far as video games go, 3DS games are cheap. You know, you can get a brand new one for, depending on the license, for 40, anywhere from like 30 to 40 bucks. So, say if you want to get into uh, start playing Pokemon, I believe there's there's still like thirty like thirty five forty dollars alongside the cost of the console. So again, as long as you've got internet connection, you're set to go for less than three hundred bucks. Uh, not accounting for tax and whatever. Um, right. Hey everyone, this is David. Like what you hear? Check us out on the internet at casualmodepodcast.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash casualmodepodcast, any one of our social media links, and of course, click on the little subscribe button below. Thanks!